my name is Bernard Ward and here's another video uh, tutorial video and this one I'm going to show you how to correct uh, an underexposed landscape image and just to make it pop as well so I'm going to be using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop uh, as well so if you have any questions just drop me an email to info at dairyphotos.com subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment underneath and I'll get back to you as well okay so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to recover this underexposed landscape image um, and make it into this so as you can see quite a dramatic difference so you might not actually believe it it just came from that one so I'm going to talk you through uh, my workflow and how um, it went from here to here so let's get going so first things first um, if you look you can see the shadows here in the bottom half but there's still a lot of detail here that's that's how I know I can I can recover it and there's quite a contrast between the sky uh, and the ground as well so let's begin so um, first things first uh, what I want to do is just recover the shadows on this one so just um, in the treatment panel just pull the shadow slider right to the top and already you can see it's a quite a dramatic difference here um, so the actual scene that that night looked nothing like that as well. I think I've got the white balance wrong in this one, so we can fix that in a second as well. Um, now I want to pull down the highlights as well to take away. Um, there's some details blown out here, so just pull that down, and you can see the details in the sky have come out a bit there now as well. <clears throat> so um, it's still a bit dark, so I want to bring the whites in this this scene up a bit. Um, so again, just at the white slider, you want to grab the slider but hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and keep sliding to the right until you see that this color is coming through. So as soon as you start seeing colors on the black, um, just let go because that area um, will have no um, information on there at all. So just let go and I do the same with the black except slide that down to the left and hold down Alt again. Sorry, let's do that again. Alt and then slide. You can see the blacks coming through. So that means that the any um, areas of black, there's no details there. There's no information. So there we are. So could be a bit of contrast there now. So what what, what I want to do now? Just looks a bit blue and green and kind of flat. So I want to make that pop a bit. So I need need to get that white balance sorted. So it was a sunset. The scene was was red. Um, with oranges and loads of contrast with blues as well so up here where it says wb on the top right that stands for white balance and if you take the drop down menu and put it to shade um this is more like what we're talking about now here as you can see the scene's more red more warm more warm colors um we just now bring it down we want to add a bit of vibrance to the scene so it looks a bit flat, so just bring this up to about, around about 20, 22, and give it a bit of clarity as well. Just going to zoom right in, just give it a bit of clarity here. <coughs> Excuse me, so we'll zoom back out. This was shot with a Nikon camera with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 16 millimeters. So, as with all lenses, you're going to get a bit of, well, not all lenses, I say so, all lenses, but with this lens, you're getting a bit of vignetting around the side. Um, so, Lightroom has a handy wee tool to correct that. Uh, just enable that, pro, enable profile corrections. Take that, you notice the vignetting kind of disappears and the picture corrects itself. Um, we'll just remove chromatic aberrations as well. I think we're alright with this picture. But chromatic aberrations is those horrible colours you get around the tops of things against the bright background. But we'll just take it anyway. But I don't think this picture is too bad. Uh, I'll zoom back out. Okay. And it looks pretty straight. Um, but we'll hit this auto correction anyway. If there's, if there's any slant on the scene. This auto should fix it, so let's head and see what happens. Yeah, it was pretty straight anyway, so happy enough there. Um, 
So I'm going to zoom in here to an area of dark. Um, and as you can see, there's a wee bit of noise in and around the bushes there in the dark areas of the picture. And why that is, I'll, zoom, I'll, I'll go back up to the shadows. Because I've opened up the details in the shadows, it also opened up noise uh, in the picture as well. So if I, if I bring the shadows back down again, you can see the noise disappears. Noise. No noise. It's because there's no detail. But I'm going to open it up. I want to get rid of that noise now. So come back down to the bottom. And then noise reduction. Uh, and that's under the detail panel. You can actually expand those, but if it's not already expanded. Um, so you want to reduce the noise and the luminance. So I'm going to take that up to around 30. And you'll see the noise disappear in there. Um, when you reduce the noise in the picture, you're also losing some sharpness as well. So because I've uh, reduced the noise by approximately 30, I'm going to sharpen it now by approximately 70%. Okay, so just bring that up to 70 and you see a, a bit of a difference there. But, so it brings back a bit of noise. So what I want to do now is mask out that noise using uh, the masking tool. So again, if you hold down Alt, and start dragging to the right. In fact, I'm going to zoom out first of all. Start dragging to the right. You can see all the areas in white are areas that are going to be sharpened. So what I'm going for is I don't want any of the sky being sharpened. Um, it's very little of the water being sharpened, so just keep going. I don't mind some of the clouds, so I'm, I'm pretty happy there. I let go now. Looks pretty good. So, um, as you can see now, the picture is it's starting to take shape. Uh, you can see the red of the sun coming through, the blue of the sky, the green of the grass. All the colours are starting to take shape. It's getting a bit of, bit of depth as well. So, you always have to remember that a, a camera um, sensor, it's not like the human eye. You can only see certain things. If, certain things that you capture. That's why a lot of people would take HDR shots because it's it's more realistic than what the, the AI actually sees. But sometimes it can be HDR can be done to death. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start treating this picture in certain areas to make it more realistic to what the scene was that night as well. Okay. So it was a lot more warm. The colours were a lot more warm there as well. So I'm gonna exaggerate the sun a tiny bit here um by using a radial filter. So if we look at the top, if you follow the mouse uh, radial filter is just here, the circle. Just tap that once, um, and where it says custom, just hit the drop down one <clears throat> and go to exposure and just pull the exposure up just about to make it a bit brighter. And the temperature, so this is how warm the color is. So we're going to bring that into around 70 here. Um, and we're going to drag a circle out where the sun hits the water, and if you watch the difference. Already, you can see that whole area is warming up, um, and it looks quite nice as well. So, um, let's just pull that slider up a bit more and give it a bit of magenta as well. Um, there's a bit orange for the blue, you're probably going to get a bit of magenta color in there, which is pretty nice. Um, stretch that out a bit. I'm going to duplicate this now as well. Um, just, just as a matter of interest as well, I see the tick on the right hand side, invert mask. Sometimes when you do this for the first time, that's not ticked. And you get outside the circle, it's modified, but we want just inside the circle. So just tick invert mask and feather. I always, I always keep that up at 100 to make it nice and smooth as well. So um, I'm going to duplicate this. So we'll just right click and duplicate I'm going to move it over here so the sun it looks like the sun's now just coming onto the path as well I'm actually going to make, a bit, make this a bit more warm a bit more magenta uh, a bit brighter and give it a drop down the highlights a bit there and give it a bit of clarity as well Uh, duplicate that again 
and leave that on the same spot. I'm going to duplicate it again and bring it across here. I'm going to stretch that right across the horizon because um, you know with any sunset it goes right across the horizon. So this is actually looking a lot more like what it was like that night. Um, so a lot more red, a lot more warm um, with, with the blue sky as well. So for now we'll leave it at that. Um, I'll probably come back to doing a bit more on that as well. So um, so what I'm going to do next, if you notice the sky, it's kind of got the same shade of blue the whole way down, maybe a bit lighter towards the bottom. But I'm going to create a bit of contrast using a, um, a filter. It's a graduated filter. Um, you can actually do this in camera if you actually had a graduated filter in front of the lens, but Lightroom's so handy for doing this. Um, a lot of the time photographers don't even use graduated filters anymore, but it's all up to you. Um, so I'm just going to take, select the graduated filter here, that's that rectangle next to the circle, and take the exposure down just a bit, the contrast up a bit, and start dragging down from around here, and you can notice now you've got a lovely graduated sky. It's coming down from a darker blue right down to the to the water. Um, maybe a tad too dark. I'll take it up a wee bit and give it a bit of blue as well in there. There we are. It makes it quite atmospheric. A lot more kind of what I envisioned in my head. Maybe not what I actually captured that night, but that's a vision in my head of how I wanted this scene to start looking. So it's starting to look. It's starting to build up a lot better there now. So um, go back to the graduated filter. If you want to go back to the same one, just select the dot. I want to make more, a few more adjustments. So uh, I want the sky to be a bit, I don't want it to be so clear. So I'm going to take the clarity down within that graduated filter, just down a bit and take the darkness down a bit as well and drop the highlights down there too. So there we go. So the picture's starting to take shape now. It's got a bit more depth. Um, I've got this path leading lines into the picture and the beach, the leading lines taking you right into the sunset. Um, what I like about the composition of this one as well is that the lanes are taking you into the house uh, and the sunset. So I think it's pretty well uh, constructed. So um, a few more adjustments. We're actually, we're actually nearly there as well. So a few more adjustments in Lightroom and then a few, a few more things in Photoshop as well. Um, we'll get there towards the final image. So next thing, I'm going to start painting some uh, warm light using the brush tool under the picture. So select the brush tool, take the temperature around 70, but a magenta, and I'm going to start painting places where the sun's going to start coming into the picture. So um, uh, click auto mask here, the density, take it up to about 80 something. So it's nice, uh, we get a nice brush paint paintbrush sorry and then the flow take that down to about 39 um so we got a nice brush here so if you watch what my brush is doing i'm just painting some nice light into the scene sometimes it can take a while for the computer to catch up so i just keep painting in here along the sky water. I'm just going to let the computer catch up. So the computer's actually caught up with itself now. So, um, these processes sometimes can be quite memory intensive and if you've got any kind of slow computer you might sometimes might take a while but um so what i want to do now that's added a bit of light in around those areas so if you drag the slider now you can see the effect taking taking place so just where i painted all right so <clears throat> just going to pull this down now to the the color panel and give the picture you've got hue saturation and luminance here with all the different colors so i'm just going to select saturation and i want um 
I want the oranges in the scene to be more vibrant, to stand out, to give it a bit more warmth, and um, just like the sunset. So, um, saturation, orange, and if you pull to the right, you see, I pull it right to the top, it looks ridiculous, but you can see that all the oranges have become really saturated, uh, which is far too much. So we'll just bring that down to about, some, some people like the real, really saturated look, but I'm a bit in between there. So we'll just come down here there um blue i want the blues to be more saturated as well to give blues and oranges go really well um so i want to give it a good contrast here so I'll pull up the blues up a bit as well you can see the, the sky starting to darken down um so we've got a great contrast now with the blues and oranges for the sun and the sky and the grass i'm going to make the green stand out a bit as well and a bit of, a bit the yellows as well so Cool, yo. Um, looking good. I'm just going to make this full screen a second just to get a better look at it. Starting to look more what I like what I was going for. So I think for now, in Lightroom, I'm pretty much done. Uh. I'm going to now bring it into Photoshop and give it some treatment uh, in Photoshop as well. So just right click on the image and go edit in Adobe Photoshop. So sometimes it can take a wee minute to load so I'm going to pause the video here and reload it again. Okay so here is the image now loaded in Photoshop. Um, so the reason I want to bring it in here is a few things I prefer being in Photoshop. Uh, Lightroom has its, has its restrictions as well. So um, first things first, what I want to do is apply some sharpening um, to the image. You can do that in Lightroom if you like as well, but um, there's some nice sharpening tools in, in uh, Photoshop. So um, I'm just going to duplicate this background layer all right i'm going to zoom in a bit here <clears throat> and on the background layer i'm going to apply a filter let's filter other and high pass bring that up to around 3.5 or 6. so as you can see it's almost like a grayscale overlay of the picture uh brings out the lines and the edges and on the blending mode from normal I'm going to change that to overlay and as you can see the picture's much sharper if I hide that layer bring it back you can see the difference sharpening off sharpening on so just zoom out again some people find that too much if it's if you find that too much or if you choose to use this method you can just um reduce the opacity but I'm going to keep it at 100 percent because I like I like the sharpening, and I like the feel of that as well. Um, and the next step, probably what I, sh I should have done this first, but anyway, we'll just flatten this image. Um, I want to get rid of this rope. I don't like this rope here. Um, this is kind of leading line on the path. I just feel like this rope's taking the eye away from the picture and it's blocking the leading line. So. Duplicate this layer. Always duplicate the bottom layer because if you make a mistake, you, know, you can always go back to that layer again. So I'm just going to zoom into the rope <clears throat> and start removing it. So loads of different ways to do this in Photoshop. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the stem tool. Uh, a few ways to get this. You can go over here to the left and that's it there. Sorry, the clone stem tool. Some people call it the stem tool and you can also use a keyboard shortcut just press s to bring that up make the brush a bit bigger so we want to tell photoshop now what was what we want to go in place of the rope so um if you hold down alt you get a target so this is the target area so say we select here it's going to paint that area over the space where the rope goes you can see it almost like a preview. Um, take the opacity up here down to about 40 and flow to about 
45 and just start painting and you can notice it looks pretty smooth you'll find when you're using this tool and the likes of grass and trees and foliage that you're going to get a better result anything organic because it just blends in so well um, and when you're getting to the to the edge here this is where it becomes a bit more tricky but it's also no problem um, so we just select a different target area I'm just going to go ahead and do this um, start painting in So obviously I'm rushing this one, but you can you can really take your time with this. So I'm going to zoom <clears throat> right. I'm just get this finished. You probably hear the clicks. I'm, I'm actually using a it's a Wacom tablet. Um, some people prefer to use a mouse, but I highly recommend for any of this type of work to get yourself a graphics tablet this type of intricate photoshop work it makes life so so much easier i'm not even going to worry about that blue hook and i think we're looking sweet i'm just going to zoom back out and voila the rope is gone uh, if you go before and after you can see the difference so i much prefer that you get the light and line under the scene uh looking a bit a bit better there so the next thing I want to do I don't like was the layout of the picture I want to crop it a bit um, I think there's too much of a gap to the left of the fence so I'm going to bring that in a bit let's crop it um, bring it up hold down shift oh sorry Maybe around there. Yeah, I want to try and keep the rule of thirds going here as well, so you can see that the boat here is on the <clears throat> one of the thirds and it's drawing you into the picture. Um, actually, I don't like the, the horizon in the middle of the scene, so I'm going to bring. Bring it down a bit. Maybe around there. Yeah, that's much better. So, next thing, I want to add a bit, of, a bit more warmth to the picture. Still a bit blue yet. Um, to do this, um, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. So if you go down to the bottom here, and select curves <clears throat> brings up the properties of the curves layer and I want to only affect the red channel here so just select red um, so here I'm just going to create a wee curve and bring the red up a bit more you see the, the difference there so as you can see the whole the whole picture lights up lovely so I'm going to create another one curves and blue channel this time and again just here oh sorry just here 
it's pulled the blue up a bit. So already you can see it's starting to look a lot more like the final image, which is great. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, I'm going to create another curves layer. This is red, green and blue channel. So I'm going to bring, make a good contrast curve, like an S curve. So you can see the darks went really dark and the lights went light. Okay, so um, we now have a mask over that layer. So I'm going to paint, I'm going to fill that in with black. So it brings it back to, to normal. And I'm going to start painting in now with a white brush. So just change the foreground color to white. Make the brush bigger. I've got the opacity at 56 and the flow at 40, which is okay. I'm going to start painting on areas of shadow um, in the picture. It's almost like dodge and burn, but it might not be very noticeable to you here, but I'm painting on the shadows and the grass. So the light's coming in from the sun, hitting one side of the grass, the other side's going to be dark. So it just gives it a bit of depth as well. Um, add about a shadow into the, the leading lines in the picture to draw the eye in even more. Again, it might not be so notable in this video, but if I take away this layer, you can see the difference. I'm actually going to make it a slightly bit darker. Give it a bit more impact. So a bit more, more work to do here. So as you can see, before, after. Great, so I'm gonna create another curves layer. So as you can see, I use a lot of curves layers to do things. In Photoshop, to give it a bit more depth, adjust some color, so another curves layer. This time, I want to make it a bit brighter. Fill it in with black, so that it brings it back to normal, or sorry, brings it back to the previous version start painting in now with a white brush the light areas so areas where the sun's coming into so this path here behind here in the water on this boat so you can sky <clears throat> I wasn't even don't even have the brush tool selected there. Let's just do that again. Oh boy. So taking shape. As you can see, we've got uh, five layers or so here. Um, happy enough for that. I don't think there's too much more we can do in Photoshop. <clears throat> Just going to flatten that layer. Try so flatten all the layers. Um, I could leave all the layers and bring it back into Lightroom, but it just increases file size, so I'll just keep it down. Um, it's starting to look good. So I want to, want to create almost like a vignette. I know I removed the vignette in Lightroom, but that was a from the lens vignette and so I want to create a bit of um, vignette to draw the eye under the under the center of the image so got the background here there's tools to do this in Lightroom as well but I prefer to do me also background just duplicate that layer um, and come up here grab your marquee tool uh, the rectangular marquee rectangular marquee tool um, and where it says feather put that to around 600 or 500 doesn't matter 600 <clears throat> and just draw a marquee on the picture and watch the corners the feather did this so if you put it at 600 there's a nice big almost like an oval shape marquee so on the on the blending modes in the layer in the top layer if we put that to multiply seeing this very dark <clears throat> so we're going to delete this circle 
So as you can see, there's a large vignette around the side. It's far too dark. So let's just get rid of that circle. Command D to deselect and take the opacity right down to about 30. So there's a lovely, lovely vignette now and it's just drawing the eye right under the center of the picture. Um, almost done. So we're going to bring this photo now back into Lightroom again. Uh, just flatten the image and go file close and make sure and hit save so that that image is now imported back into photoshop and you can see it has really taken shape since the beginning so just a few more things a bit of a double um treatment on this one so i'm just going to pull the shadows up a wee bit more again pull the highlights down bring the whites up a bit uh, give it a bit more contrast, slight bit, we'll just move the clarity. Uh, I am pretty happy that that's good to go. And there you have it. So i just make this picture. There we are. That's the final, final image. So um, what I'll do, I'll upload the raw files to my website and you can download and play play along uh, yourself and see if you can, what you can come up with. Um, and if you have any questions, just send me an email to info at dairyphotos.com um, and I'll get back to you. So thank you. Bye-bye.